Hi, and welcome to this video where I'm going to teach you how to factorize a polynomial using Ruffini's technique. This is a very popular technique in Spain, and although you might have learned how to factorize a polynomial elsewhere, I hope you find this technique useful and quite practical. It's kind of fast to use. So, what is the factorizing a polynomial in the first place? Well, what you have to do is find out the roots of the polynomial. The roots, remember, are the solution to this equation. Whatever it is that you can substitute the x with, that gives you 0. That's what the root of a polynomial is. How do I find it? Well, the way to proceed with your Freenius technique is the following. First, you're going to write down the coefficients of the different terms of the polynomial. The coefficient of x to the power of 4 is 1. The coefficient of x to the power of 3, 2. The coefficient of x to the power of 2 is minus 9, for x is minus 2, and the coefficient with no x, also called the independent term, is 8. And I make this little box over here. The next thing I do is I take a look at this independent term, 8. And I make a list of the different values, the different uh, whole numbers, integers, I can divide 8 by. It's going to be 1 and minus 1, 2 and minus 2, 4 and minus 4, and 8 and minus 8. All of these numbers, 8 can be divided by, and the result is an integer. So I pick 1. Let me get started by picking, for example, the number 1. How do I proceed to apply Ruffini's technique? I take the number that's over here, and I copy it down here. 1. And now we start. I take this and I multiply by this. The result of 1 times 1, I'm going to write it over here. So 1 times 1 is 1. Now, I add these two numbers together. 2 plus 1 gives me 3. 3 multiplied times 1, that's going to go over here. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 plus minus 9 is minus 6. Minus 6 times 1 is minus 6. Plus minus 2 is minus 8. Minus 8 times 1 is minus 8. And therefore, 8 plus minus 8 gives me 0. This is going to be the way in which you factorize by Ruffini. This is the algorithm. And whenever you get a 0 over here, it means that this is a root. This one here is a root of this polynomial. Let's carry on to find another root. I repeat the little square. And I'm going to try now, for example, with uh, 2. Why not? 1 times 2 gives me 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 plus minus 6 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus minus 8 is 0, and that means that 2 is another root of the polynomial. When I get to the end, I have three terms over here, which means that if I divide by x minus 1 and x minus 2, the result is x squared plus 5x plus 4. I can simply turn this into a quadratic equation, which I can solve using the quadratic formula minus 5, plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 16, which divided by 2 gives you minus 5, this is, excuse me, 25, not 24, plus or minus the square root of 9, divided by 2, which is equal to minus 5, plus or minus 3, divided by 2, which is going to give me two results. One is minus 4, and the other one is minus 1. These will be the four roots of this polynomial, which means that I can now factorize. How do I do that? Well, I'm just going to say that this is equal to, take the first root, 1, so I write down x minus 1. The next root is 2, so I write down x minus 2. The next root is minus 4, so I write down x minus minus 4, which becomes x plus 4. 
and finally I have minus 1, x minus minus 1 becomes x plus 1. These terms over here are multiplying. And if you want, you can do the multiplication slowly, and you'll see that indeed these two things here are equal. And that's an example of how to factorize using Ruffini's technique. We're now going to do some other examples which um, have certain slight difficulties that you might come across, so that you know how to handle those. Let's get started with the first one. What I have over here is another polynomial, which I'm going to attempt to factorize. The difficulty here is that there is no x squared term. How do I proceed, therefore? Well, I'm going to write the coefficient of x to the power of 3, and since there is no coefficient for x squared, I'm going to write down a 0. And now I'll write a minus 3 for the x, and then a 2. I make the little square, and I'm going to write down here the numbers that are that 2 can be divided by. Let me get started with the 1. Let's see if that works. Let me start with minus 1. Let's see if with minus 1. 1 times minus 1 is minus 1, plus 0 gives me minus 1. Minus 1 times minus 1 is... Uh, minus 1 times minus 1 is 1. 1 plus minus 3 is minus 2. Minus 2 times minus 1 is 2 positive, and here I get a 4. Now, I did not get a 0 over here. And if I don't get a 0, it means that minus 1 is not a root. So I have to try with another one of these numbers. Let me do that now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to start again, excuse me. It takes no time. So, let me get started with 1. I do 1 times 1 gives me 1, plus 0 gives me 1, 1 times 1 gives me 1, 1 plus minus 3 gives me minus 2, minus 2 times 1 gives me minus 2, and there we go. Now we do have a root. Let me now solve the remaining part of the equation. And I'm going to solve this using the quadratic formula. Minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 4 times 2, 8, divided by 2, minus 1, plus or minus 3, so square root of 2, sorry, square root of 9, and hence my answers are going to be minus 2 and 1. Those are my roots, and hence I can write this factorized. x minus 1, x minus minus 2 becomes x plus 2, and another x minus 1. I can actually write it down as x minus 1 squared multiplied times x plus 2. And that's another polynomial I can factorize. Let's look at another example. Fijaros en este polinomio de aquí. ¿Qué es lo que sucede? Este es muy sencillo, pero el problema que tengo es que si te fijas no tengo una x cuadrado. Tengo un x elevado a 3, pero no hay ninguna x elevado al cuadrado. Entonces, ¿qué hacemos? Pues vamos a poner un 1 para el x al cubo y pongo un 0 para el x al cuadrado. In this case, what I have is a coefficient in front of the uh, highest ordered term of the polynomial, in front of the x to the power of 3. In the previous ones, you can look back, we always had a 1. Now, how are we going to do that then? Well, it's almost the same thing, except for one small detail at the end. Let's proceed. Let's get started with 1. We seem to be good lucky with 1. 2 times 1 gives me 2. 2 plus minus 8 minus 6. Here I get minus 6. Plus 2 gives me minus 4 times 1. Oops, that didn't work. Let's try another one. Okay, let's see if I can get this to work with minus 1. 2 times minus 1 is minus 2, minus 2 plus minus 8 is minus 10, minus 7 times minus 1 gives me 10, 10 plus 2 is 12, 12 times minus 1 is minus 12, and hence here I get a 0. That's great. Now, I have to solve my 
quadratic equation, just like before. I'm going to now factorize the 2 over here to make my quadratic a little bit easier. So otherwise it's quite complicated. And now I just have to solve this one here. Because that's when this is going to be equal to 0. So therefore x is equal to minus, minus 5, which is plus 5, plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 24, which is divided by 2, gives me five plus or minus one divided by two hence I get two roots here six divided by two is three and four divided by two is two. So those are my two my three roots. I have x minus minus one which is x plus one times x minus three times x minus 2. The big difference, and you must remember to do this, is that here I had a 2. So what I'm simply going to do is I'm just going to add it in front, multiplying. And that's a very important thing to keep in mind. Let's look at two more quick examples. Supon que me aparece el polinomio con un número delante. Lo que vamos a hacer es exactamente lo mismo de siempre. Pongo, en primer lugar, mis coeficientes y hago la cajita y me apunto aquí los distintos números por los cuales el 12 es divisible tengo el 12 y el menos 12 el 4 y el menos 4 el 6 y el menos 6 el 2 y el menos 2 el 3 y el menos 3 what happens if you happen to have no independent term well this is extremely easy all you do is you can factorize 1x and in this case x equals 0 will be a root of this polynomial. Now I can just factorize the rest by solving the quadratic. So I get that x is equal to minus 1 plus or minus 1 plus 24 divided by 2 which gives me I'm sorry if I tend to be a little too fast. I've done so many of these. Minus 1 plus or minus 5 divided by 2 gives me two answers. Minus 3 and 2. And hence, this becomes x times, and now the factors of x squared plus x minus 6, x minus minus 3, just x plus 3, and x minus 2. And that's how you can factorize this polynomial. And now for the last example. What happens in this case? Well, I'm going to try to factor it the same way. Ruffini's technique. 1 minus 2, 3, 14, and minus 16. And you'll see something interesting is going to happen here. Bear with me a second. Mm -hmm. I'm going to first start with 1. So I do 1 times 1 gives me 1. Here I get minus 1 times 1 gives me minus 1, therefore here I get 2, 14 plus 2 is 16 times 1, 16, 0. Wow, that was good. Let's carry on. Let me now try with minus 2. 1 times minus 2 is minus 2, plus 1 is minus 3. Minus 3 times minus 2 gives me plus 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. 8 times minus 2 is minus 16. And hence I get a 0. And of course now I have to solve the quadratic. x squared minus 3x plus 8 equals 0. And when I do that I get 3 plus or minus the square root of minus 3 squared which is 9 minus 32 divided by 2. And here I'm going to get a negative root. Now that means that I cannot find the factors of this equation easily. That's something that you can actually solve if you know how to use complex numbers. But until that happens, we're just going to have to leave this in this way. So how do I factorize this then? Well, I'm going to write down my roots. x minus 1, x minus minus 2 gives me x plus 2. And, well, as far as I got, I have to multiply this times x squared minus 3x 
plus 8. And that would be an appropriate way to factorize this polynomial. Again, you can just try to go ahead and multiply this, and you'll see that you'll get this result. This video explains to you how to factorize a polynomial using Ruffini's technique. What you're also doing at the same time, of course, is finding its roots, or in many ways, solving the polynomial. This is a useful technique, particularly whenever the solutions of the polynomial are nice integer numbers, which you'll see are most of the times during the mathematics that you do while at school. I hope this video was helpful for you, and I will see you next time. Goodbye. In este caso de aquí, fijaros en este polinomio. Me va a pasar una cosa interesante. Cuando yo quiero resolver este polinomio de aquí, hago lo siguiente. Pongo primero aquí los coeficientes y voy a empezar haciendo lo mismo. Me apunto. Si queréis ya este paso eventualmente veréis como no os hace falta y lo podéis saltar. Cuando le vas cogiendo el truco, perdón, 2 y menos 2, 4 menos 4, 8 menos 8, 16.